My name is David Feldman. I work at the Paley Institute. Uh, I head the spine program here. Um, and we do complex spine as well as uh, scoliosis. Uh, the scoliosis is a diagnosis that I wanted to talk about today and some of the treatments, some of the current, uh, some of the new current treatments that we have and developments in the treatment uh, of scoliosis. So scoliosis just means that you have a curvature of your spine and there's different reasons for it and we don't have to go into all the reasons right now, but mainly it occurs usually before adolescence, usually before puberty, and it can develop and become worse. Most of the time it may just require exercise and things like you know physical therapy, which is called trough therapy, or it can sometimes require a brace if you're very young and the curve is moderate. When the curve comes severe, that's when we talk about doing some surgical approaches or some surgery for it. We try to avoid that. We spend a lot of time trying to avoid surgery for scoliosis um, or curvature of the spine, but we do sometimes have to do that. And so I'm just gonna talk for a few minutes about some of those surgeries that we can do and what it looks like before and after. So behind me is an X-ray, but you can see this is the curvature of the spine. This is a spine that should be straight. It's made up of all these vertebral segments or vertebral bodies, and they're rotating on themselves. They're basically like a chain that you let loose, you know, in all the links, and the links are just collapsing on each other. And so, so to one of the standard ways of fixing a very severe scoliosis would be to do a fusion. You put, we actually use what's called navigation, and we um, very carefully place every screw around the spinal cord into the bone, utilizing this navigation tools, and basically that allow us to fix the spine with two rods and weld together the segments that are rotating. So we rotate them back, and then we fuse them on the sides. Fusing means we weld them together. And that's really what you're seeing on the side here. This is the same young woman who basically had surgery where we took this thoracic, which is chest curvature, and we made it um, quite uh, straight. But what makes us unique? Why is that different? Well, first of all, being able to use some of the modern technologies of navigation means that these screws can't be misplaced, that basically we're placing them in exactly the location that they need to be placed in. Secondly, we use things like ultrasonic scalpels to actually cut the bone in areas to loosen the bone, as well as to allow this welding to take place. So there's many different things that, are, that go into fixing you know, from going from this curvature, which is about 80 degrees, to this, which is now straight. And that requires having anesthesia, good, you know, the anesthesia, very aware of what's going on, and being able to uh, monitor the patient so they don't have blood loss, and then be able to place these instrumentation in a, in a contemporary, modern way, and a safe way that allows us to get the correction. And then using what's called an ultrasonic scalpel, which allows the bone to be actually loosened and cut in a certain way that allows you to go from this picture to this picture. So that's one methodology of treating scoliosis would be to fuse it together. People worry about that word fusion. They worry about the loss of motion. Well, if it's just in the chest cavity, most of us don't have much movement in our chest cavities. But how do we maintain motion if it's lower down? So there's various ways now to do that, to try to decrease the number of levels we're gonna do, not go into the, into the lower back, but sometimes we have to. And so recently there's been a treatment called vertebral body tethering, or VBT. And basically that VBT is utilized usually in young growing patients. Sometimes we may advance that indication a little bit to older patients and try to maintain the motion using screws from the side and almost like a band to hold them together. And that, it looks something like, like this. And in this patient, you can see they have the same scoliosis or a scoliosis. But in this case, you see from the side, we put the screws in again using navigation and attach them with something you can't see, which is almost like a rubber band. This, this basically this band. And that will allow motion. So we use that for high level athletes and kids. We use it for times when the curve is really low down in the lower back, so we don't want to fuse there. And we really can maintain motion in a way. That may not be as tried and true or has a long track record as doing a fusion with rods and screws, but certainly it's becoming part of the arsenal that we have in treating scoliosis. And there are other things I can show as well 
uh, something called Apifix, which is made by a company called Orthopediatrics. And that allows us to sometimes in, in patients who are not very active with mild curves, allows us to not fuse the spine and allows motion. So all these different techniques are put together in utilizing current technology, utilizing state-of-the-art techniques to allow you to safely correct spines, and then take that technique in these cases of just these are just regular patients, regular people who have these scoliosis with no other conditions, to very complex conditions that we treat, whether it's dwarfism or something like that, where it becomes much more complicated, but certainly the same principles exist when you treat that. So I think this is a brief synopsis of scoliosis, which starts by certainly not operating, but when we do, we try to find the right fit for the right patient. So hopefully that helped explain something dealing with the curvature of the spine called scoliosis. I'm David Feldman and have a good day. Thanks.